Well, welcome again to the wonderful world of Geospatial Next. Congratulations. You've got to step four of the building and executing a Geospatial Next strategy. So this is the exciting stuff, actually. We've been through some pretty interesting, heavier stuff in the last three talks. In this one, we're going to talk go to market. So this becomes very creative. And this is actually a place where so many people are excited to get to really, really quickly. So let's walk this one through. Um, let's get started. Before we jump in, as I like to do, I just wanted to give, uh, for those that haven't seen the previous talks, I just wanted to walk you through where we've been so far. I encourage you to go back and get the details from the, the previous, particularly last three talks that I've done. But uh, we're going to focus on go to market here. So where have we been? We started out in this generating possibilities world, a framework where instead of throwing darts at a wall, we actually have a small group or a group of small groups to yeah, talking about ideating, validating with customers, looking at the marketplace, doing some technology discovery and, and, and building out a very a high level sort of business models. This is sort of a guiding the, the framework I've got there. Um, is really sort of to guide what ultimately turns out to be a story. So each of those groups come together with a larger group and actually present their idea with the justification for the idea to the wider group. That's the strategic choice process. Ultimately, the goal of that process is to end up with a single possibility, the possibility of the greatest chance of success. From there, we put that possibility through the strategy cascade, Roger Martin's cascade. I use four pieces of the five that uh, that he describes in his book, How to Win. Um, from there, a, hopefully a product or solution is, is generated. Uh, and that is, this might be an iterating process as well. If, if one uses an MVP to actually validate, to make sure that you've got the right uh, problem to solution journey, we may be starting back again if we find problems there. But ultimately, we should be arriving at hopefully some a product or a solution. But what comes next then is, and it falls under the capabilities piece within the strategy cascade is this whole idea of, of go to market. So let's jump into that now. So I, I put this definition um, up before uh, in one of the previous talks, but go to market is often very confused by folks. Simple definition of it is, is a sales and marketing plan for launching a new product, service, or expanding into a new market. It isn't just sales on its own. It isn't just market on its own. It's those things together. It's where we are engaging with customers ultimately. So it is that combination. Why I find the world we inhabit in Geospatial is so exciting, because I believe there are some amazing opportunities now to build new products and solutions. So that's why I've been for the last few years harping on about the world that's evolving, the new world that's geospatial. Um, so it's a very exciting time. And I think that we can now tell some incredibly compelling stories around that. And that picture there is actually some of the work that I, I'm currently involved in is, involved, is dealing with the sort of data that you're visualizing there. That's actually uh, LiDAR point cloud data that's been colored along a transmission line. Um, the coloring actually is, an, is, is analytics on top of that data to, to indicate where there are um, problems, uh, whether it be vegetation which is growing out and, and could impact um, the line itself or trees that could fall onto the line and disrupt that, uh, that power line. So uh, um, very compelling stuff, all very, all very new and all very exciting. I get very excited about this stuff. So. I cannot emphasize enough, and we're going to really harp on this in this, your story. It's critical that you construct your story. I see it over and over again. There isn't really a story that people have constructed. And you'll always see, you'll see that in marketing and sales textbooks, you know, build out your story. But again, folks sidestep that one too often. Stories start with why. And uh, I, I really encourage you to watch Simon Sinek's TED Talk. He did it a long time ago. It's one of the most popular TED Talks ever, ever done. And it's really fantastic. It's, uh, it's not very long. But wh where I want to you to, not only do I, what, what, should you watch it, but listen to his description of Apple. 
he does two he tells two two sort of sales marketing stories uh, it's as if he was an apple executive he starts from the what and the how and ends up with the why and then he goes from the why and out you'll see what i mean by how important it is to start with the why you'll see how compelling the latter story is with simon Sinek telling it so do watch that so your story is it's actually the base of all your marketing content it's also your sales pitch and it's not about you it's not about you it has to be centered on your intended audience if all you do is talk about you and how wonderful your product is and it does this and it does that and it does the other you'll lose your audience immediately nobody cares about you they care about what impact you can have on them so you have to be looking through their eyes when you tell these stories. Critical. Your story how? There's, there's lots of ways one can construct stories, but I, in, in what I've found to work the best is if you construct story themes. Now, there, is, there are elements of your competitive advantage within this story. And I say elements. A competitive advantage doesn't necessarily form part of your story. For example, if you're part of an organization which has deep connections into a particular sector, let's say the transportation sector, DOTs, you're already selling products into those DOTs and you've got a really big footprint in those DOTs. Extending that conversation into a product conversation, for example, is a much easier place to be than if you're building new relationships. So that's a competitive advantage. That's not necessarily something you talk about as, as part of your story, you'd probably be talking more about in your story about the product itself and its uniqueness. And there's other aspects to this, but I, I wanted to underline the fact that there are, there's going to be, it's, it's going to tie back to at least one of your competitive advantages, but not all of them. And, and I, I've always found that building themes is, is an important thing. So sales and marketing, speaking with marketing, Marketing, if you have a spear, it's always sort of regarded as the sort of shaft of the spear. Again, I've, I've mentioned this before, but one of my favorite books on marketing is Crossing the Chasm. If you haven't read it, please read it. It's really important. The D-Day analogy is absolutely amazingly fantastic. And we'll, I'll probably cover that in another talk in the near future. It really is. It's really very memorable. So what is marketing? Well, I mean, some of the, some of the, um, channels that we can use are digital ads, for example, in, in, in Google's world, um, email campaigns, SEO, um, that would be blogs, that would be landing pages. Um, and I've, I've, and I'll be honest with you, I'm, I've been all through my life. I've been somewhat critical of some of the stuff that's been written in the geospatial world. It's not very compelling. It doesn't grab you. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't get your attention. It doesn't get your attention very much. There are some good examples of, of folks out there that are now writing some really uh, some really interesting content um so in, things are improving there just 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 a side comment um webinars are another place that we we are in the marketing world and then there's some new media stuff that's coming out i think that podcasts are really interesting there's there's a plethora of those um i'm really i really like video and we'll talk about video in a minute so a bunch of things that marketing can do ultimately marketing have the mechanisms to drive leads that's that's the ultimate goal of marketing is, is to drive leads to generate leads so but telling your story in the right, right 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 way through the most appropriate channels will be dramatically increased lead generation i'm reading that don't like reading stuff off of slides what i'm saying i'm underlying there that the fact that if you don't have those stories defined then you're again i'll use that that term you're throwing stuff against the wall that isn't related is is miscellaneous if you if you've got content which is related and you've got a plan you've got an editorial plan built around these certain themes it means that your lead generation is going to be much more successful what you're building in marketing is going to be much more successful so again the story is critical in building out that story let's jump to sales so again using the using the spear the point of the spear is usually sales um, and I'm going to point you at Dave Brock, somebody that I really like. He writes a really good blog. 
super experienced sales guy, loves some of the stuff he writes. And actually anyone that's in England, no, he's not the singer to Hawkwind, but he's a really good guy. So, so look him up on the internet and, uh, and, and you'll like some of the things he writes. So what do, what do sales guys do? Well, they do prospecting, and Dave talks a lot about prospecting, which is identifying potential customers. That could be leads that have been passed from marketing that you're driving deeper into. It could be just you looking for new folks to, to connect with. Ultimately, what sales are doing are building relationships and driving down to some action. In the case of a salesperson, it's, it's a sale. But again, I'll emphasize it. Your story is the ammunition for successful sales prospecting. If you don't have a good story, then you're not going to get, you're not going to be so successful. Let me be careful with my wording. You're not going to be so successful in sales prospecting. So an, another, uh, dare I say, framework, you know how much I like frameworks. Five phases of customer engagement. That sounds awfully dry and boring. What I really mean by that is drawing people deeper into your story. So what does that actually look like? How do we draw people deeper in, into our story? How do we get, uh, how do we get that engagement, uh, that deeper engagement? Five steps. Number one is attention. And I'm going to use a kind of silly analogy for this, a book. When you walk into a bookstore, I'm often drawn by the picture on the front of the book. I mean, you know, you just naturally are. So you've got my attention. The title and subtitle of a book can often be make you curious. You know, if it's a compelling title, Crossing the Chasm was a compelling title. I, and, and the picture on the front, there were a lot about the book that I found kind of compelling just by looking at the front of it. So curiosity is something we have to um, garner. Is that the right word? The next thing is interest. Now, I often with a book, I'll, I'll actually look in the inside flap and I'll read a quick summary of the book. That will potentially get my interest and this is a bit tenuous this this exam in this example but i think i often will read a little bit of the book i'll go in and if like it's a business book business books are so often you know somebody patting themselves on the back talking about how great they are at selling things and they've never sold anything in their life you know you can kind of tell it's this sort of um, motivational stuff i'll put that book down so you might have got my attention and curiosity and, and interest but once i sort of look at the first maybe read a tiny bit of the first chapter you've lost me or you've got me drawn in then i take action i'll either buy the book or i won't buy the book so silly analogy but you kind of get the point of of those those five aspects of uh, drawing people deeper into ultimately taking an action from that story so social media i believe that social media is a game changer for sales and marketing i think we we can and I'm careful with this because traditional marketing remains very important. But social media has added a new dimension to the whole sales and marketing process. And it's something I've done a lot with over the years and found it to be a very uh, compelling way to engage. I've seen it done very poorly in many other places. So, I mean, I've, I'm not patting myself on the back for doing it well. It's just I've, I've, I've looked at it and, and, and worked hard at seeing if there's something there that is worth continuing down that path. And I strongly believe that there is. So let's think about social media. I've changed my mind on what I was going to show you in this slide. I've got this title as use case one. I'm actually going to ask you some questions about this. In the next slide, I'll actually talk about a use case that is um, a, a, a social media use case, particularly folks on sales. But let's just talk this one through for a minute. So it's my belief that LinkedIn in particular in the social media of the social media channels is potentially a fantastic channel, one that you should leverage to the nth degree. I think it's second to none from a business perspective for sharing and engagement. Um, but my fear is it's still really badly used and examples are I get a lot of folks just reaching out to me cold selling to me over LinkedIn. I don't know the who them, I don't know their product or anything about them. And they, they send me these messages to say, wouldn't you love our product? No, no, I'm, you're immediately ignored by me. So in the next example, you're gonna see how to do that much better. Um, but in terms of sharing an engagement and, and, and having folks understand who you are and your, your profile, so 
it's a great way to raise your profile and your product's profile to be informative to be educating to get people um, in that place which, which we just described so your homework before we move on to the next slide is go look through linkedin with a with a, a critical eye but look for those folks that are doing clever things that are, that are that are walking through the journey we've just outlined they're grabbing your attention how are they doing that they're making you curious to want to know more curiosity you've seen lots of things that make you curious what are those things they grabbed you they've made you curious you want to know more you want to build out interest and build a relationship and trusting thing i've got these the wrong way around but um think through those things that we just spoke about in that pyramid and understand how you're affected by LinkedIn, how you're affected by the things that you're looking at. What are the ones that you'd like to copy and mirror? Because that's what I've done in my world of social media. I've looked through the best and tried to mirror the things that I think have been the best things that I've seen. Feel free to email me with your thoughts on some of that stuff. Maybe I'll do a, a separate uh, uh, post just on this subject alone. So there's a bit of homework for you. Let me now move on to a uh, a real example, a use case example, where I think social media is very effective and, and I'll walk you through it. Let's share another one. And this is, this, is, this is something that Dave Brock has spoken about and something I've effectively done as well. It's kind of interesting. It was nice when I saw that he was, we were sharing the same thought process, but I'm gonna use a, let's just walk through something here. So think about it, when you're looking for a job, you're looking at job descriptions. That's what that is, is a need. You've got somebody that's expressing a need for something, a pain point maybe. So if you really want to be successful in this journey um, in getting a job, you need to do some work. So first of all, who's the head of the department? Who's the person that actually holds the strings of that department? That's the stakeholder. That's the person you need to be talking to. Third piece research social media is a great way of researching people actually i mean we can find a lot about it on the web in general but social media is a great place for that what can you find out about the company what can you find out about challenges the company ha have got in particular related to the job that you're interested in in uh, getting and what can you find out about the stakeholder so do your research so step number four reach back to that stakeholder, find out their email address, find out or directly link to them in LinkedIn through messaging. Um, and in that short blurb that you give them, and if you're sending a sort of a direct message to them, you only get so many characters, tell your short story. Not long, short. Your goal here is, and again, the story has to be about them, not about you. You're telling a story about how you're going to help them. But it's got to be a short story. It's got to be an attention grabbing curiosity story next you hope that that person's going to respond and if you've done that previous step well they will respond and it may be you can send that as an email and a, a message inside of linkedin set up a call with the stakeholder to share your story how can you alleviate their pain point which is the need that they've described how are you perfect for that job you need to get on the phone and have that sales conversation that generates interest in that person the stakeholder and trust and there's the action you hope from all of that work is you get offered the job so i think that's a really good illustration and dave brock talks about it slightly differently to me but it's the same journey there's a really interesting journey through using social media to engage to walk through that pyramid that i showed to get an end result so i think a really good example final slide you will you may find in your go-to-market phase that you'll re, you'll have to adjust your strategy again we're always testing and it's in the go-to-market stage where we've we're, we're testing out those assumptions that we've made who we should be talking to what we should be talking about our stories um, our competitive advantage, the place that we're playing in. We're testing all those things out and we may find in that journey that we've made some wrong assumptions and we need to go back and adjust the strategy and work back through again. So it's really in that go-to-market phase and we have to be able to measure things really carefully within this phase. This, this, is, this is where we actually are testing out our hypothesis and making adjustments to it. So that's the fourth talk. I think a really important one, but we had to go on the journey to get to this one. Again, I've mentioned that Lots of folks try and go from ideas 
to go to market in two steps and that's generally a foul, foul approach unless you're lucky. This has been a much more calculated approach that we've taken it step by step by step to get to this. This is the stage where we can actually start generating revenue. So this is the critical stage. But without the previous steps, we're not going to be very successful at this stage. And the story at this stage is absolutely critical. So I welcome your feedback. I welcome any thoughts you might have. Um, we will continue on this journey. I've laid out in the last four the core framework, the core pieces of the pie, so to speak. We'll try and color the picture as we move forward with uh, some more solid examples. So thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us on the Geospatial Next channel. We're focused here on understanding the future of geospatial. That's both how we get to mainstream adoption of the technology and data and how we start using blockchain and crypto to move things forward. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you next time.